Why is ABA so controversial? I get this question all the time and I today am going to tackle this question from a different perspective. I am going to show you a clip from a interview that I did with Armando Bernal who was diagnosed with autism at the age of three and he was pretty significantly impaired and now he's an, an adult autistic person who is also a board certified behavior analyst and we talk all about the controversy of ABA. Let's get to it. Hi there, I'm Dr. Mary Barbera and if you haven't been following me, I've been um, presenting YouTube videos for over five years and I also have been creating weekly podcasts, video podcasts for the past three years as well. In the past, I've presented weekly video blogs and kind of fallen out of that a little bit. So we're going to try to resume by presenting um, not the whole podcast necessarily, um, but a chunk of the podcast the video podcast so that we can cover specific topics to help you quicker and you can share it, you can watch it, and we can uh, point people back when they have questions about related topics. So today we are covering uh, the controversy of ABA with an interview from an autistic BCBA. Uh, before I get to that, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, you should do that now because I just got a plaque that says um, I surpassed 100,000 subscribers here on YouTube. So thank you if you're one of those 100,000. If you're not, uh, subscribe now and hit the notification bell too. So let's get to this short excerpt from podcast number 151 with Armando Bernal talking about his background as an autistic child, an autistic adult, and then when he found out about ABA um, after he became a special education teacher. I started doing mentoring programs in college for children with autism. And I was like, wow, this is, I, I love this. This is awesome. And again, I, I didn't know what to think of my own autism. And so seeing so many children in this mentoring that needed support, I was like, this is a great opportunity. So I got into special education. I became a teacher in that sense. And then as I became a teacher, I realized I did not know what I was doing um, in the sense where I was a first year teacher. This was a lot. There was, you know, aggression. There was different behaviors that were being shown. And I didn't really have a whole lot of understanding on how to handle it. Um, and my, my sister, who had done it for some time, helped me a lot. But I, I always felt in myself that there had to be more to, to help with these kids. There had to be something to do. And I did some more research. And then that's how I found ABA. Um, I didn't even know it existed until um, I was able to, to start doing more research. I found podcasts. I found different kinds of YouTube videos and things like that that explained it a bit more. And I became really fascinated on the fact that uh, a typical ABA thing is that there's four reasons why people do anything, you know, escape, attention, sensory, or they, they want something. And I was like, wow, that's, that's so... Um, simplistic there's so you know it's, it's very black and white and for me I've always seen the world more as in a black and white like it's either this or this and that just helped me understand so much and I just I was so drawn to it and I just told my sister after I was like I'm gonna get a master's in this and that's just how I've always been and she was like, okay I believe you and so I went and I did it and I I passed is it is that something you disclose right away to the parents of the kids you're helping and like how how did that kind of um kind of letting people know and disclosing the fact that you have autism how when did it start and and what's it like now oh my gosh yeah no I, I love that question because it's from the people that I've interviewed um as well like there is so much time that I've had that I wish I could go back and say, hey, I had autism. But again, like I was saying in the 90s and early 2000s, that wasn't the case, that that wasn't something that you really wanted to disclose unless you wanted to be looked upon differently. And I didn't. Um, and it wasn't until actually I graduated college that I realized that I need to be more accepting of who I am. And it was because of the parents that I met while I was in special education. It was because of 
the experiences I had that really let me understand um, that I needed to be who I am in order to better serve the kids that I see now. And one part of your question was, do I tell parents? More often than not, I don't. Um, and it's not so much that I am ashamed. It's, it's because it's not my story that they're interested in um, when they come to me in the clinic or when they come to me in a special education setting. It's the parent who has really swallowed a lot of pride to say, hey, I need help. And that's, for me personally, I feel like that's so hard for parents to, to accept. And I want to be able to show them that they are able to do so many great things. And so I focus on their child's story. I focus on their wants and needs because that is what matters. Um, there are some occasions where a parent just comes to me and is really down and out about their child's situation. So many times I can't tell you that I've heard parents say, my child is autism, I think his life is over. And, and that's really when I try and step in, when I see these parents are upset, they're frustrated, and I tell them that that's, you know, that doesn't need to be the case. And, and then I disclose my own story to them to let them know that if I can do this hard thing, then I'm here to support their child and do their hard thing. And that more often than not, thankfully, has been uh, a sense of hope for the parents to say, I, I can do this, I can accept it. Because sometimes parents come to us in the clinical setting or in a school setting and say that they can't, they don't want to do ABA because they've heard so many horror stories of what ABA can cause. And I try to bring in my, my side of the story to let them know that that's not, that's not the case here, is that they're, they're here to progress, they're here to grow in independence, and that's my main goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, as a BCBA, I've done a lot of podcasts on ABA for myths and truths, how to spot good ABA. We just had Tamika Meadows on from I Love ABA. We can put, we can link these in the show notes, but increasingly, you know, now that insurance is covering all 50 states, there's more access than ever. And now we have lots of people saying ABA is abuse and you shouldn't try to change things. And, um, you know, autism is a gift. And like, so you're kind of caught in the middle of this firestorm, right? So uh, like, how, how do you respond if you get um, adult autistics that come and say, how can you be a BCBA? That's abuse. I've, I've gotten that plenty of times actually. And I, I enjoy the fact that I get to be in this middle ground because it is, it is so much controversy on both sides, right? Of ABA is abuse, ABA is not abuse. And it's just back and forth, but I get to hopefully bridge that confusion, or I get to bridge that conflict and tell them that this is why I'm in this field. This is why I've seen this progress because it's for, I, I do what I do because it's for the parents that come to me and say, my child hasn't eaten anything, but chips and snack foods for seven years. Or my child has never said, I love you or gone to the bathroom by themselves. And to see the success and the growth in that child after ABA, for them to be able to eat all kinds of foods or be able to go to the uh, bathroom and take care of independent skills like that is why I do what I do. And so I tell a lot of parents that come to me, like I was saying, that come to, and say, oh, I can't do ABA, that there that is one bad apple in a whole bunch that unfortunately causes these conflicts to arise. But that's that's not what they're going to get when I help them. And I try to be as very transparent as possible and say, you know, please, you know, view, view what I'm doing, see, see what I'm doing in this clinic and you're welcome to come at any time. I always try to make sure that it's a partnership. And the same thing with those individuals with autism that say like, how can you do ABA? And I just, I say, please give me your evidence. And just like any good BCBA, let me see the evidence-based articles that you're describing to me and we can talk about it and I can give you mine and we can have a back and forth conversation. And sometimes they agree. And I love that because I, I can talk ABA all day, but other times they don't. They say, no, I don't want to listen. And it's like, okay, well, that's, that's the problem then. If you're not willing to hear one side or the other, then this isn't going to go anywhere. And I just, I continually invite other people to come find me and say like, this is why I think what you're doing is wrong. That's fine. Let's have a conversation and talk about it. I hope you enjoyed that short clip from Armando Bernal. If you'd like to view the whole podcast or listen to it, you can go to marybarbera.com forward slash 151. If you enjoyed this video blog, I would love it if you would give us a thumbs up, 
share the video, leave a comment. And um, if you would like more information, I would love it to invite you to attend a free online workshop at marybarbera.com forward slash workshop. And I'll see you right here in some capacity next week.